how did you start rapping? How did I start rapping? Well, messing around the barrio, kicking back, you know, backyard parties, getting drunk, picking up a mic, you know, when these little DJs come on through, rapping over old school beats and just putting it down and just started like that and then not taking it serious and next you know somehow it got serious. So you didn't plan to, uh, to do it serious or on a professional base. It has just been for fun at the beginning. Yeah, for the beginning it was just for fun, rapping about my neighborhood, just you know putting it down with my neighborhood, me, my homeboy Scrappy, my homeboy Peanut. You know, we just used to mess around, you know, putting it down, a couple of homies, you know, just drinking and ra rapping once in a while. And then, uh, you know, it became serious when I met some people who were in the game. And that's how it all started. Yes, okay. Uh, I know uh, from yours and uh, Creepers DVD uh, that you are traveling a lot uh, to do shows in other states uh, and even countries uh, like Japan, uh, I think. Uh, What's your favorite place to go for a show uh, and why? Fair place, man. Well, we had, we, Japan was real nice. Went to Japan. Went there for a week. Me, Scrappy, Silent, Criminal, a couple of high power soldiers uh, out of state. It was pretty good, like Denver. We always have fun in Denver. Um, you know, we went to Texas with Creeper. We went, I mean, we, we traveled all around, had shows everywhere. A little something, something going on everywhere, just having business, and uh, you know, it's always fun to go out of town because the local town is always burned out, you know, been there, done that, so it's always hit fresh territories. <laughs> so you know, it's, it's all, it's always fun going out of town. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what would be my favorite one, but I mean, they're all they're all pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about uh, high power in general. Uh, who do you think is the best uh, rapper on the label? Uh, I mean, besides you, you know. Yeah, best rap on the label, man. Uh, you could say lyrically wise, uh, would be Mr. Criminal. And for uh, a person who just puts it down, Scrappy Local. But I mean, there's a lot of talent. Silence, got, everyone got their own little style, you know? Yeah. Silent got his own style. Criminal got his own style. Uh, Lil Tweety's got his own style. So everyone, we all combine as a team together and, you know, have our own little styles together and put together. Uh, for many uh, people, High Power uh, is the strongest uh, force in the Chicano rap uh, game right now. Uh, what do you think about other labels uh, like uh, low profile uh, records that are also looking uh, out for that position to be on top? Um, is there any kind of competition between you and low profile, for example? Nah, there ain't no competition. We, we don't even look at it. We're on the streets, we're doing music, we're. Uh, putting the real shit out there, we ain't really looking at no competition or nothing like that. I mean, there ain't nothing really that I heard on the anywhere that's really some kind of competition. So we're just doing our thing, high power. That's it, you know. Yeah. There ain't nothing. There ain't nothing. We, you know, we ain't seeing no competition and shit. Have you uh, expected that you can bring it that far uh, in the business? Um, like you've gotten uh, already and uh, especially in that period of time I mean it's just a few years and you've gotten from a no name to one of the best known Chicano rappers out there yeah well you know I, I figured a lot of the people in the game were kind of fake and uh, as soon as we came in the game we got the real shit we're from the streets you know and it's you know once it's like the real motherfuckers come in the game just take over the shit real quick and uh, I figured that you know once we get, once we get in the door gotta play humble a little bit you know stay quiet play the role get in the game and now just conquer you know so it's like now we're just on the path of just putting it down uh, we're, we're just trying to break doors now you know we even worry about you know taking over the Chicano rap game we want to take over the whole we want to bring the whole Chicano rap and the homeboys to South Setters and put all the put it in the mainstream you know what I'm saying like MTV so you know we ain't even done with our journey yet, you know? Yeah. We still got a little ways to go. Yeah, uh, I feel you on this one. Uh, your new album, uh, Always and Forever, will be dropped in late uh, September. Let us know more about it. Yeah, well, this album's a real sick album, real female. It's got everything in one. Like, got a little bit of oldies. I got a lot of original type beats, West Coast gangster beats. Got a little bit of a 
everything this album. Uh, got featuring Nate Dog, all the high power soldiers, and uh, this album is gonna really break some doors. I mean, if you listen to some of the lyrics, you're gonna, you, you know, I'm, you know, now I'm starting to talk a little bit. I'm starting to open up a little bit on talking about the game. And uh, Always and Forever is gonna be a real feel my album, and it's a, uh, it's a good album coming out. And when it comes out, you know, that's when people will know what's up. Uh, what's the deal with you putting Nate Dog uh, on your album? Uh, because uh, I can tell you the people on uh, the internet are already really hyped about uh, this uh, one track, you know? Yeah, well, to me, if there's anybody to get on a song that's out there in the music business right now that's real good, it's got to be Nate Dogg, you know what I'm saying? I mean, there's, you got 50 Cent, you got Eminem, you got Nate Dogg, but Nate Dogg is the one that makes a song. I can have anybody just come in. Like 50 Cent could come and bust a rap, but what's what's the rap? You know what I'm saying? I'm a rapper. I, I need someone who can lay down a nice hook because I don't sing. And Nate Dogg puts it down singing that, can sing with a gangster twist and makes it sound nice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I mean, if I chose anyone, it would have been Nate Dogg. And Nate Dogg, it is. And Nate Dogg is on my album. And it's going to be real nice. And uh, it's just, you know, you got to give him respect. He, he's a man putting it down. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there are already uh, some haters uh, about you doing that track with Nate Dogg because they say you had to pay him to be on your record and th this doesn't help the Chicano rap movement and stuff like this, you know. What do you got to say for them? Number one, I never came out of my pocket paying Nate Dogg. Nate Dogg doesn't jump on no one's stuff for just nothing, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people that can give money to Nate Dogg and he'll do it. But me, I'm on a different level. I'm running on the streets. I run the West Coast, L.A. All these guys, uh, from Nate Dogg to Snoop Dogg, they know who's on the streets. And uh, when it came to me, it was a different story, you know. But, you know, I'm you're not going to speak on that. Nate Dogg, you know, he knew what's up. And, you know, we did a song. And there's no paying money to nobody. Because, you know, I run the streets of L.A. area. No Nate Dogs, no nothing. Chicago Rap runs the streets of the L.A. area. So... We're coming in and changing the game around, and letting them know that who's really running the West Coast. So yeah. Nate Dogg put it down, and I mean, he respects. I give him much respect for putting it down for the homeboys, and uh, you know, just going like that. And uh, for any haters, they can suck my balls. There ain't nobody out there. Haters fucking are piece of shit anyway. I'm, I heard about these computer geeks talking shit, but you know, on the streets, that you never see these kind of people. So mostly people that are on the computer is probably mostly jealous rappers or I don't know who the fuck they are but it's somebody that just can't do shit and is stuck behind a computer trying to figure out how to become famous when they're when they're nobodies I smell pussy you know that's it yeah I get you on this uh, what's the next step for you uh, to get even bigger next step well I got a new album after this one it's all produced by Zap Troutman uh, all done from Zap he produced it in and out It's a nice album that comes out later down the line. I mean, I'm already working on that right now. Zap flew in from the East Coast over here in L.A. We put him in a motel, got in the studio, knocked a nice album out. But after that, it's just big climbing for me after this, you know. Who knows? You know, there might be some Dr. Dre beats. There might be this. It's just wherever the stuff goes, you know. We're just living day to day, just making things happen, keeping a gangster any. You know, just try and put it down for the West Coast, South Side, and that's it, man. That's, we're just doing our thing. Uh, why did Snapper uh, leave High Power, and what's your situation uh, with him now? Well, Snapper never left High Power. Snapper came to me with his first album, uh, The Connect, and uh, we already had a thing going. My first album came out, and Snapper needed a little help, so I offered him a little help to bring out his first album. And I even told him at the beginning... After you do it, do your own thing. Because, you know, a couple of homeboys from my neighborhood, you know, had a little problems with him, but I, I backed up Snapper just to help him out to bring out his first album. He came out came out with his first album. He did good. He made a little money. He made some money, fed you. With that, you know, he wanted to see if he can do his own thing. We let him do his own thing. You know, we didn't we didn't trip on him like, oh, he's leaving High Power. He never left High Power, you know. We just helped him out on his first album. And after that, I can't say where he's gone now. You know what I'm saying? Now... <laughs> I mean, I don't know if he is doing good or what, but, yeah. I mean, he never left high power. You know, we've we got our own thing going on, and uh, we always open arms to anybody who 
ever needs help. But, you know, you got to keep a gangster in the high power. That's all we know, you know? Yeah. Uh, what do you think about Mr. D uh, and Creeper beating him up? Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a lot of people getting into shit all the time. It's not a big thing. Uh, just, I can't really, I mean, I, when uh, the Mr. D situation was there, I was there in that situation, you know, and, mm -hmm. I mean, they just had to handle it, and, you know, Mr. D got on Snapper, and that was it. I mean, after that, you know, I got in between them because I, I get along with Mr. D, And, you know, I was helping out Snapper that time and told him they can't be going, you know, they can't be getting to shit, you know, get everybody involved in it. So they just had a little one-on-one -on -one and whoever won, whoever won. And then Creeper um, and Snapper, I guess they had a little money dispute that Snapper never uh, paid Creeper for something. And uh, Creeper is the man of his word. He said he's going to, he wants to, you know, see Snapper and Snapper... You know, I guess they wanted to see Creeper, and they met somewhere in the bathroom, and shit went down, and that's that's history, you know. <laughs> history. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Um, there are rumors uh, that some uh, in Universal uh, still owe you, yeah, let's say a lot of money. Uh, what's the deal with that? Nah, this is rumors, man. Uh, they don't owe me money. I always get my money. Um, you know. Sometimes they take late on their payments, but, you know, I got much respect to them because when it comes to me, I get paid, you know, I get paid straight. If I didn't get paid, why would I be going through them, right? So I'm still going through them because it's my decision. I mean, Stomp Records is, uh, I mean, you know, they could have done a lot more because, you know, they don't understand the gangster stuff. Yeah. They just know all the little soft stuff, little old school stuff, and, but, you know, I'm going with them, I'm, you know, I'm huge. We're, we're together in the thing, I got a new deal through Universal, it's not even Thump no more, but it, Thump is A&Ring the projects through Universal, so I got a Universal deal now that's a direct, basically a direct through Universal, so, but Thump's still A&Ring it, but it's not even, you, you'll never see a Thump record stuff on my projects no more, there's no more Thump on it, it's Universal, B-Dub Universal. Do you think that uh, Universal will help you out more? And um, of course, you have done the track uh, with Nate Dogg, but can we expect to see anything from you uh, on NTV because of that Always and Forever album? Yeah, well, see, this is how the shit works. I mean, there's Universal Records and there's Universal Distribution. I go to the Universal Distribution where they rely on the record label mm -hmm. to provide them with everything when you're on universal records they'll take care of the mtv and that's why a lot of these guys you see on mtv because they're on the record label but we're through the distribution which is just as good and makes just as good study you know whatever but uh i mean yeah nate dog with my video might happen but if it doesn't happen i mean we're, we haven't shot the video yet but it's already going to get heavy radio play in la everywhere chicago miami's already going to pick it up on radio so it's going to be played on all the radio stations and uh If it comes down to it, you know, this new album is under some group called Pegasus. They're putting the money out mm -hmm. for the project. And if it does good, we're going to shoot a video to it. And, you know, the video will be seen on MTV. But regardless, whatever the case is, you will see Mr. Capone on MTV one of these days for sure, whether it be today or uh, maybe a year from now. I will, you know, it'll be done. So that's not a big thing. Yeah. Uh, I have heard that you and Creeper had to go uh, into jail uh, on Friday. Uh, what happened? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, you already heard the story, huh? Yeah, yeah, we just got out of county right now. Yesterday, got out of county jail. Uh, nothing big, you know, just rolling up to a club looking for some, you know, girls, you know, to party with, you know, in the hood. Uh, Creeper was right there, said he wanted to pick me up, so we rolled out. Uh, two drunk guys coming out the club, think they're all gangsters, with trying to take the shirt off, trying to be nuts. Got a little beer balls. <laughs> Some south tested them up, you know, knocked them out, beat them down. So next you know, cops, you know, come. We try to take off. We get caught. The guy goes to the hospital, and we got assault and battery charge, and we're locked up in county for, you know, but we got out, you know, just OR'd us. We just got to take it now, so we just got to go handle that. Hopefully the guy don't try to sue. If he does, it to beat him up again, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs>
Oh. Yeah, but, you know, it's just an everyday thing, you know. I mean, trying to avoid doing that kind of stuff, you know. I ain't, I ain't about, you know, just starting shit, but someone's talking shit to you, you know what I'm saying? You got to, someone's drunk, and, you know, we, I wasn't even drunk. This guy is drunk coming out of a club with the shirt off, just woofing, you know, looking at every car, but he looked at the wrong car to woof at, you know. And that's when he got his, you know, little song something, so. Yeah. Many people are talking about who's uh, the biggest Chicano rapper uh, out there at the moment, and uh, many go with you uh, or Lil Rob. Uh, who would uh, you go with, and what are your thoughts about Lil Rob? Uh, are you cool with him? <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm just a, I mean, I'm just a homeboy, you know, a gangster rapper. I'm not trying to be, you know, Mr. Chicano rapper of the year, but you know what? I mean. Much respect to Little Rob for doing what he's doing, but you know what I'm saying? There's another side of the story, the token of how shit's done, and uh, that's where Mr. Capone and High Power Soldiers come along, and Southland and all the gangster rap. You know what I'm saying? Because you know that shit's getting neglected of the real shit that's really happening. And uh, I feel you know, at the end of the whole deal, gangsters make the world go round. You know, gangster shit always prevails, straight up. Uh, do you think uh, that Chicano rap is getting uh, what it deserves from the media, or is it still way overlooked? Yeah, I mean, uh, <clears throat> it's kind of overlooked, but it's uh, it's coming bigger. A lot of bullshit politics in the game. You know, a lot of people trying to do their own program, and uh, not everyone's getting together. If all these labels kind of got together, had a little union and a meeting, a junta, you know what I'm saying? and work together and put Fedia into everything to, together, it could blow up big time, you know what I'm saying? But, I mean, a lot of people that are in the record game, they're in it for themselves, you know what I'm saying? They're not in it for uh, the whole movement. They just want to they wanna get some, buy some beer and maybe the uh, party, show off to the girls that are so cool or something because they're rappers. It's not a big thing, but so everyone, a lot of people are in it for themselves, you know, and that's where the fucked up part is. But regardless of the cases, the strong will survive, And then eventually the strongs will blow up to the next level. So it's all in time. You know what I'm saying? This Chicano rap thing is a new thing. You know what I'm saying? And it's uh, something new that not everyone's seen. And, you know, it's spreading. Like, you're calling me from Germany. So obviously this shit's moving around, you know? And uh, that's a good thing. And, you know, hopefully, you know, Japan's loving it. Eventually, someone could blow up. It could be anybody. You know, you'll see me on MTV. You might see someone else on MTV. And then that just opened doors for everybody, and then uh, it's going to happen, you know? So I, you know, it's, it's kind of getting a little, not too many people know, because it's so real and so raw, it's from the streets. This is a street rap thing. This is straight from the streets, not in a big office, you know? Mm -hmm. The people who know about this shit, they're from the streets, most people. The people who know about the regular music you hear on MTV, they live in a little house up in maybe a nice area, and they don't even know what's going on, you know? They just yeah. watch whatever is on TV. So this is street rap, and it's going to eventually take over, you know? Mm. Um, I always do this uh, at the end of my interviews, you know. Uh, anything else you want to say uh, to your fans? Uh, I'd just like to say thanks for all the support, you know what I'm saying? I know this is on the Internet, so I got all these lame-ass probably haters on it. They can all suck my balls, you know. This is Big Cyclonus. This is Big Southsiders right here. This is Hot Park Click, and uh, we're just taking over this shit. <laughs> And that's it. There's nothing else more I can say. Just love to all the fans. And I got my homeboy Scrappy right here. You know, he's right here. You know, he's like, you know, to tell everybody what's up with his new album that he's coming out with before I let you go, right? Hold on. Scrappy, kindly. Yeah, what's up? Yeah. N nothing big. <laughs> Just chilling. Tell us about your upcoming album. Oh, new album coming out. Scrappy Loco. That's my last name's Crazy. Putting down with the High Power Soldiers. Mr. Capone. And uh, got some good features on there. Might be featuring Cocaine, the production of Fingers. And uh, yeah, it's going to be banging, coming out later on in the summer. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, keeping it gangster, putting down for high power. Oh, uh, I mean, I just had to plug in my homie real quick. He's rolling with me right now. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, so yeah, that's it, man. Just like to say thanks to all the fans. September 28th is the release day, the real release day for my album, Mr. Capone, Always and Forever. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be the. This year's biggest album, straight up, no competition. I'm saying it. Yeah. Mr. Pony said it. <laughs>